the resources that I'm talking about, really, the fact of the matter is they will never satisfy our greed for more. We always want more. And, and they won't be good enough for us, but the exceptional ones, right? The individuals that can appreciate these things, these resources, are those that are familiar with, with value and significance of the resources. When you are aware, you can act accordingly. And the same goes for when you are unaware. Okay? But what's true for sure is what you don't know can hurt you. Can be devastating. Right? Sometimes worse or far more than what you do know. Okay? And when I talk about resources, I don't want to leave you guys in the dark, but I'm talking about our time, right? Our money, our skills, our talents, services, and maybe even products that, that we provide. And most importantly, you know, our energy. These are the resources that I'm referring to. We don't necessarily value them. That's why people do the things they do. That's why people spend the time they spend on the things that they do spend the time on. Our energy, how we, we, we give that away so easily to people who don't necessarily have an impact or to things that don't have an impact in our de development, our growth. Right. So this is what I'm talking about. But I think it's important right, to recognize that in your own life's patterns. Like you got to really pay attention. Like what do you do on a regular basis? What don't you do? And what does that mean? There are patterns. We are creatures of habits, right? So we do things for a while and then we might change and then we do that thing for a while. But I need you to recognize that. Your life's patterns and how do you utilize them to your advantage? If you do. Right. How often do you use it to your advantage? Right. People are bound to struggle like we are dedicated. We're devoted to struggle. Why? Because it makes a great story. Right. It's great to be able to say I came from here and now I'm here. That's a great story. That's every hero's story. Rags to riches. Right. You hear it in songs all the time, especially in the hip hop community. Right. But. Musicians use this as well because they understand almost every human being on the planet can relate to that. So people are bound to struggle and hardship while others are drawn to, you know, submerged in opportunities. They see, they excel, they take something and they just run with it. Right. And the, the doors of opportunity are constantly available to them, readily available to them. I think that's the difference between the two different people that I'm describing here. But it, it doesn't matter which one of these two you are or that you're familiar with, right? You must use whatever your situation is to your benefit. And if you don't, then it's going to be to your detriment. So in order for you to reap these benefits... Right, your time, energy, and so forth, you have to come to terms with the fact that this is who you are. Yes, you can change. You can become someone else. But in this moment, while you're listening or watching this, this is who you are. You are here right now. You are present with me right now. And you need to look in that mirror that's before you and say, who is this version of me? That's important, right? So once you, you are at peace with who you are, then you can start thinking about, wait a minute, this is my situation. How can it be a benefit to me? But it starts up here, right? Take me, for example. Sometimes what I struggle with is hmm, how independent we become and the constant rushing, rushing and hustling and bustling to relinquish our dependence. Like, think about it. As a kid, you wanted to be an adult. 
You don't want to depend on somebody. You don't want to hear from somebody who's older and telling you what to do because you wanted that freedom. This is where the first step or stage of the illusion of freedom begins, right? It's sold to kids. I want to be grown. I want to be this. I want to be that. And that's a part of the challenge, right? So we're quick to relinquish our dependence. Then we are inconsistent when it comes to you know, realizing that we actually need each other. Think about it. Somebody's walking down the street, they get mugged. They would hope another person is nearby to call for help or to assist them. You are in your house alone and you fall sick. How are you going to get assistance? You need someone to help you. Right? You are with a friend, your phone dies. You're going to need to borrow their phone to use and make a call. Or a stranger. You might use a stranger's phone, whoever is available to you. But it's another human being. Right? And these are just superficial things that I'm kind of throwing out there. But food. We need someone to prepare food so that we can buy the food. We need someone to be able to have the produce available in the store so we can go and pick that up. We need someone to be behind a counter helping us with medication when we need medical assistance, right? We need each other. But when you meet someone and you say, hey, do you have five dollars? Do you have a dollar that you can help me out with? I really need to get from point A to point B. And that person won't help you. Why? Because in that moment, during that request, it's a transaction. It's how we often look at it subconsciously. It's a transaction. If I give you this, how are you going to be a benefit to me later on? 